Review copy provided by Nintendo and Square Enix. When it was first announced, Octopath Traveler turned gamers' heads with its bizarre title and retro-inspired visuals. It promised a story of 8 different characters as they go throughout their own journeys in the continent of Orstera. Let's see if Square Enix successfully created a JRPG that weaves together all the characters, or just made something that looks promising on the outside. Octopath Traveler's story is interesting to say the least. It takes place in the large fantasy world of Orstera, one filled with dungeons to explore, journeys to go on, and adventures to uncover. The name Octopath Traveler actually comes from the multiple perspectives that you can take in this game. There's a total of 8 playable characters scattered throughout the continent, each with their own stories and motivations. There's Cyrus the Scholar that teaches at the Royal Academy seeking constant new knowledge, Ophelia the Cleric from the Frostlands who serves the Order of the Flame, Hanit the Hunter whose sole job is to protect her village while her master is away hunting a dreaded beast, Therion the Thief looking for his next big opportunity for great riches, Alfin the Healer who's on a journey around the continent helping those in need, Primrose, my personal favorite path, a dancer who's looking to avenge her father after he was murdered by a mysterious trio of men. Tressa, the merchant that works for their family shop but looks to branch out outside of the village. Lastly, there's Oberic, the warrior who works as the man at arms for the local mountain village. All eight of these playable characters have their own unique paths and stories that you'd think would entwine with each other or create some sort of grand narrative adventure. Sadly, that's not the case. While these characters can meet, their interactions and the way they're woven together are practically non-existent. Imagine all the playable characters in Sonic Adventure 1 meeting each other by saying, what's up, and then joining your party, without one grand chaos villain to tie it all together. While the combat certainly gets benefited by these characters being together, their stories are self-contained and thus the whole 8th path story presentation feels a bit misleading. As individual story slices that just happen to take place in the same world, they're perfectly fine. Like I said, Primrose happened to be my personal favorite just because her story follows this theme of revenge and grand tragedy. I found myself rooting for her and genuinely wanting her to succeed in her endeavors. When you jump into Octopath Traveler's campaign, you'll be presented with the choice of starting your journey as one of the 8 playable characters. Each of them come from different corners of the world and their stories are broken up into chapters. The way the campaign plays out is really your choice as you can play with a single character if you'd like to, or run around the continent and gather as many of the 8 playable characters as you want. Completing a character's chapter 1 acts as their introduction to the story. You learn the character's background, what they want to do on their adventure, and so on. Typically this means exploring a section of the world, completing a dungeon, fighting a boss, and learning your character's special ability. Each of the 8 characters have their own unique ability. Primrose, for example, can alert NPCs to join your party as temporary summons, and Tressa can steal money from enemies while in battle. Anyway, back to the chapters, I found the gameplay structure to feel both completely linear as well as not at all. Let me try to make some sense of it all. The way the campaign is played out, you have to complete chapter 1 of a character, and then as a player, you can choose to continue chapter 2 of said character, or go find another playable character on the world map and start their chapter 1. There are things like recommended level gates that sort of nudge you in the right direction of gathering more party members, and even then you can still end up being underleveled. It should be noted that your party size is limited to just 4 though, so even if you gather all 8 playable characters, complete their chapter 1s and proceed on to one of the characters chapter 2, you'll only be able to play as 4 of the 8 playable characters as half the team levels up and the other half gets left behind. So yes, you actually can play as just one character, though it's going to take a lot of grinding to eventually meet the recommended levels. You can also play with all 8 characters and manage their stats over time, or do what I did and recommend, maintain a main party of 4 that are constantly in sync with each other in terms of level and stats. I found that to be much easier to maintain without slowing down the pace of the game. To say the structure of the game is convoluted is a bit of an understatement, especially when you take into account the pretty subpar way the writing of each character was connected or I guess not connected. The big upside to the gameplay though is the battle system, because if there's anything that Square Enix nailed with this game, it's definitely the battles. Outside of predetermined boss fights, you'll run into fights with enemies and random encounters inside of dungeons. Battles are presented in a turn-based fashion where the timeline of turns is presented at the top of the screen. Your party's HP and magic are on the right, and finally enemies are on the left. What Octopath Traveler does uniquely is add in battle points to your party and shields to your enemies. If you look to your right, you'll notice that there's a yellow dot that gets added to everyone in your party every turn. 
This is a battle point, and it can be used to either do multiple physical attacks or buff the power of a magic attack. In total, you can stack up to 4 of these on a single attack, and it balances out the enemy's shields. Enemies have these blue shields with a counter on them, and a number of vulnerabilities next to them. If you play Persona before, it sort of works similarly, although instead of knocking down an enemy, you break their shield. When their shield finally hits zero, the enemy breaks and is open to stronger critical hits. This gives battles an extra layer of strategy of having to juggle your battle points and knowing when to use them. Should you break down an enemy's shield right away, or break it down over time and then unleash one powerful stacked attack? Of course, all these ideas integrate with the attack patterns and ultimately make for one of my favorite battle systems in any JRPG right now. Octopath Traveler runs on Unreal Engine 4 and uses that engine to create a stunning HD 2D presentation. I describe the visuals as a true modern take on classic RPGs of the past, I mean quite literally. Octopath Traveler uses classic pixel art of the past and then adds in its own modern flair to create something beautiful. Realistic ocean waves, extraordinary looking lighting, and captivating landscapes create art across the canvas. In battle scenarios, attacks look spectacular with the colorful light shows that happen with every magic attack. The sparks and twinkles shine beautifully, adding on to the odd but also awesome retro and modern visual combination. Throughout the gameplay, there's this sort of bokeh effect that creates this film like aesthetic to the gameplay. Everything in the center foreground is in focus, but everything else around it is blurred out with an almost age like film grain to it. When playing in dock mode, Octopath Traveler looks to run at 900p to 1080p at 30 frames per second, with the resolution dropping down to 720p 30 in handheld mode. Regardless of how you play, the UI elements in the gameplay scale pretty well according to the varying displays, whether you're playing in dock mode or in handheld mode. With that said, the framerate performance isn't so stable. There is the occasional drop in framerate to the mid-20s for a quick second before it finally fixes itself, so it's not consistent but certainly playable. to answer questions on any of the material within. Yes, Professor. The opening act should be on that stage already. Now, get out there and earn your keep! Octopath Traveler has an absolutely whimsical soundtrack that captivates the sense of adventure. The main theme is catchy and despite all 8 characters having such different backgrounds, the main theme still manages to represent them all perfectly. One of my personal favorite tracks was the Frostland theme that slows the pace of the music but really feels more emotional. It can perfectly recreate the feeling of happiness and sadness at the same time. It's something special. Being a JRPG, I was curious to see if I was able to change the voice acting dialogue from English to Japanese and I'm happy to report that you can. I did like some of the English voice actors like Laura Post as Primrose, but for the most part I found myself switching over to the Japanese voice actors. I felt like they captivated the emotions of characters authentically more often. As for sound effects and HD rumble, I thought they were all well done. Things like the sound of wildlife and the ocean waves in the background helped the world feel more alive. The HD rumble was used for more subtle touches like doors being closed and small interactions inside of buildings. Ultimately, the sound effects and HD rumble helped tie both battles and interactions together. Coming into Octopath Traveler, I was hoping for it to be a JRPG that weaves together the stories of 8 unlikely heroes into one grand adventure. Well, that sadly isn't the case. While each of the heroes come from unique backgrounds with their own interesting stories, some more than others, it's quite disappointing to see the interactions between these characters be so minimal. A comparable analogy would be expecting to hear a story about 8 kids somehow meeting in a classroom and ending up being best friends despite being so different and having different backgrounds. In the case of Octopath Traveler, instead they would just go to the same classroom, say hi to each other on occasion, and then go home. Sure, it's going to be cool to see the jock story, the nerd story, and the cheerleader story, but it'd be much cooler to see how they all come together. That's where this game kind of lets you down. Where this game doesn't let you down is pretty much in everything else. Battle mechanics and combat are easy to get a grasp of and are fun to strategize in. The battle point system of investing points into stronger attacks either to break down enemy shields or finish them off is fun to maneuver. Overall presentation is breathtaking with my review copy constantly turning heads either when I played it in public and handheld mode or on my TV. 
Ultimately, Octopath Traveler is a competent JRPG with an okay story, but much better gameplay. It's not the stunning JRPG I think a lot of us were hoping for it to be, but still, it was a fun experience to jump into despite it having some room for better writing. If I had to give it a score, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. That does it for my review of Octopath Traveler for the Nintendo Switch. If you have any questions I may have missed in this review, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. Until then, you can go ahead and click on my face to subscribe, click one of the videos on the left to go check out some more of my content, and thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.